In this video, we're taking a look at great songs by awful artists as determined by my researcher who decided to be anonymous in this video, and I can see why. Okay, David Guetta. I can see the argument for why he's an awful artist. Lots of uh, ghost producing and kind of mid-dance music every once in a while. This is probably his best song. This is a crazy, crazy top line by Sia here. Top line, if you don't know, is, you know, usually it's melody and lyrics, sometimes chords as well. It's what you consider top lines. Yeah, that is a really crazy good song. And this drop is crazy. Okay, Black Eyed Peas. So this is from their album, Elefunk. That's a great album. I don't know if I think that this is the best song off of Elephant though. There's a bunch of good ones here. I mean, it's a pretty nice song. The lyrics are commendable. Maybe it's more the production I don't like. The production on other songs on this album is really strong. I think they could you can make a really good cover from this song for sure. I mean, that part is beautiful. Just, they're just trying to do this kind of hip-hoppy swagger to it that works against it, I think. Okay, people. Yeah, again, can't see the argument for why it's an awful artist. Um, this is not my favorite Pitbull song by a long shot. It's very repetitive. It kind of works, but... Eh. Yeah, here's a hook. It's just give me everything tonight over and over. You have to give to Pitbull that, like, at least, you know, he's just having fun. He's not really trying. Um, he was actually a reggaeton artist originally. Uh, but nowadays, he does more just dance music. Okay, Flowrider. Okay, I'm offended by this one. Flowrider is a good artist. He's got low, my house, banger songs. This is not even my favorite one. It's kind of... <laughs> this euphemism is kind of... This lisp here. The close. Close. So basically, there's this uh, plugin that you use in music programs called a deesser. And uh, when you over deess, it sounds like you're lisping. And I think that's what happened here. It was just really bright vocals, and they deessed it, and it just became like, come real close. It sounds like, but it's an effect that went too far. <laughs> Funny. Cool. Uh, now nah, I like his voice and like my house is a fun song. This is an all right song. Catchy, for sure. Bro Country is a form of country pop originating in the 2010s and is influenced by 21st century hip hop, hard rock, and electronica. Bro Country songs are often musically upbeat with lyrics about attractive young women, the consumption of alcohol, partying, blue jeans, boots, and pickup trucks. Charming. Luckily, the following is a great song. <laughs> the amount of salt on that. Okay, yeah, this is a good song. Don't wanna hit the karaoke bar, can't sing without her. So make them drink strong, cause brother she's gone. This is more of a heartbreak song. Heartbreak song though, right? I'ma need some whiskey glasses. Cause I don't wanna see the truth. Yeah. She's probably making out on the couch. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I'ma need some whiskey glasses. So this is the typical four chord. It's like C, G, A minor, F. I don't know exactly what key it's in. I mean, that kind of gives me goosebumps, that song, to be honest. It's just the vocals so strong and the melodies are really strong. I don't know. I've, I've heard a few good songs by Morgan Wallen. I don't think I agree. He's an awful artist. I can understand why people don't like Bro Country. Okay, Iggy Azalea. Kind of universally accepted to not be great. She really fell out of love. Like, all of her fans fell out of love with her. But this is a strong song, for sure. I feel like there's mainly Rita Ora on this song, though. So much singing. Love that top line. Yeah. Very strong. Super, like, EDM-y build-up. 
But yeah, that's very funny. Oh, that's actually just listen to that drop. That's crazy. I love that. It's so atmospheric. But yeah, Iggy Azalea kind of, everyone fell out of love with her. I think the style of rap moved on and she also had some kind of weird controversies. She was weird on social media and um, lots of feuds with other artists. And there's an embarrassing clip when she does like freestyle rap at a concert and just makes up the entire thing. Like all the words are just made up words, <laughs> which is very funny. Okay, Madonna, awful artist. <laughs> I'm not sure if I would say this is the only strong song she has. I like Like a Virgin. I like Vogue. But yeah, I think the longer her career went on, the quality of the work got worse. But this 80s stuff, I love this. This is like funk pop. This needs to come back. Love that. Mm-hmm. Okay, Crazy Town's Butterfly. I don't know any other songs by them, but this is a good song. This is also kind of, you know, <laughs> music made by men who want to get with women, so they sing about women. Like, it's very... <laughs> so creepy. I mean... <laughs> yeah, this is bro something. I guess it's bro rock. What is that song about? What is the song Butterfly by Crazy Town about? And was there ever any controversy around the lyrics or the music video? The song centers on an infatuation or deep affection the lead singer expresses towards someone, using the metaphor of a butterfly to describe the light and uplifting feeling this person brings into his life. Critics and listeners might have had differing views on its artistic value or the depth of its lyrics. Hey, yeah, whatever. Okay, it wasn't anything too bad. It's very like Limp Biscuit vibes, isn't it? <laughs> Called rap rock. So I didn't know this was uh, interpolated from uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, though. Okay, Jennifer Lopez. I can't argue. I'm gonna say it. I. She hasn't done anything that I think is strong. She's more of an icon than she is a musician, for sure. <laughs> the ab flex. Love it. It's <laughs> a weird music video. What's going on in this music video at all? Yeah, not much to say about that. I don't find her a good singer, but she's obviously, you know, super successful in a bunch of areas, including music. So who am I to judge? From the researcher, the following band are pioneers in a genre I like to call douche rock. They made sure all the douchebags out there finally had something to listen to after they ran out of Def Leppard songs. <laughs> what will this be? Oh, Nickelback. Uh, I don't, I don't think they're an awful artist. It's, they know what they are. But I guess that's kind of true with Pitbull as well and stuff like that. It just kind of... They found something that worked and they're doing it. This is fine. I always really liked the productions in Nickelback. Like, this snare is huge. It's almost its own genre of snare drum, the Nickelback snare drum. It's just massive. And when I hear it in other music, I'm always like, that's a Nickelback snare drum. <laughs> Okay, Shakira, awful artist. Hmm. I don't know. This is a good song, though. This might be one of her best. She learned just a bunch of different languages to make hits in different languages. I respect that so much. She seems super driven. But a lot of the music, it's a little bit novelty, I guess. She's such a great dancer, too. Amazing. Okay. Savage Garden. Well, I don't know any other songs by them. Um, this is the one that kind of got big. His singing sounds weird. Just the way he has his onsets of the... It's like he doesn't support properly when he's singing and then he kind of like does it. It's kind of sliding into the notes in an awkward way. It's also kind of asmr -y, which is not my favorite. <laughs> okay, Imagine Dragons. I guess you could argue that. I'm a fan, though. I'm a fan. This is, however, their song with the most, like, crossover appeal. I can totally see that. Yeah, 
Yeah. I mean, I like Enemy. That's a really strong song. It's from the Arcane soundtrack featuring G JID, I think. That's super strong. The Demons might be their poppiest, like, best song there. Ah! 50 Cent! I don't know enough about 50 Cent to say if he's good or bad. I will say, this song is a product of its time. I like it, but whenever I hear uh, Steel Pants like this, I think of uh, MIDI ringtones, and I think this one was actually big with the ringtone uh, industry back then. It's like early 2000s-ish. So, uh, Steel Pants are really easy to kind of make sound good in a MIDI ringtone. <laughs> okay, Selena Gomez. Well, definitely not the strongest singer out there. You gotta say that, but um, I think she's done a good job at um, writing some strong music. She worked with uh, Justin Tranter and Julia Michaels on this one. Matsman and Robin produced it, and also some production by Phineas. It's a very strong song, I think, about her breakup with Bieber. It's very atmospheric. I think she's very courageous to kind of be that vulnerable in her music around something that was so public, like their relationship was so public. I feel like she's lived her entire life in just the limelight, which seems to really suck. But that's also played to her benefit. Like that's why she's a pop star. So you win some, you lose some, I guess. She seems like the type of person who would probably choose not to be famous if she got the option. I don't know. She seems to have gone through some really rough stuff. Okay, Jason Derulo. I think he's super talented, but it's like he's not living up to his potential. I love One to Want Me. I think that's one of the best pop songs ever. That entire album, everything is for crazy. I can see the argument for why you would think Jason is a bad artist. It's a lot of kind of novelty stuff, similar to Pitbull and stuff, with like, you know, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle and all this stuff. Okay, from Wikipedia, once again, from the editor. Nepotism is the act of granting an advantage, privilege, or position to relatives or friends in an occupation or field. Who could this be? I'm trying to think. I think it's pretty common in the music industry to kind of either come from a rich family, to kind of have all the opportunity to go super hard, or, you know, someone in the industry. It's very common. Like, you can see it with a lot of the biggest stars. They were playing on easy mode, which is fair enough. Like, you can't hold that against them, but yeah, let's see what this is. Nepotism, let's go. <laughs> Okay. Well, Enrique Iglesias, I get it. Not a strong singer. Obviously, son of a very famous opera singer or like kind of butter singer. We call them in Sweden. Um, Julio Iglesias. I haven't heard this song. It's definitely better than Hero. If you guys have heard I Can Be Your Hero Baby by Enrique, that's, that's a painful song and a half. What? 21? <laughs> oh, this one stands for just my research and not me. Yo. That's kind of crazy. They have a bunch of good songs. Pretty much all their hits are good. I don't know too much about their album tracks. It's a great fan base, too. I thought they were always... Well, I mean, I was a lot about, oh, you gotta spell it right or whatever. But overall, I always thought that that was a very pleasant fan base when I came across it. But yeah, that was like a big thing for a really long time when there was like a lot of rabid 21 Pilots fans that so like you couldn't write it out with numbers. They would get very angry be like, no, you got to write it like 21 Pilots. And also, I think like there's supposed to be like a line or something through the O. I don't remember. Anyway, good band. <laughs> don't be angry with me. Leave your anger in the comments, I guess, if you want to, if you need to. Oh, this is a good song. I don't know anything by Alexandra Stan, but this is a banger. It's very hard to not like... So freaking good. I like it a lot, actually. <laughs> Come on. That's crazy. <laughs> so sick. My heart was blinded by you. have kissed your lips, held your hand. Yeah, James Blunt. You could argue he's an awful artist, 
One thing I think about a lot when I hear his voice like this is that it's a little bit pitchy. He has a tendency to be a little, I think it's sharp. If they auto-tuned him a little bit harder, I think I would like his music a lot more. <laughs> is that bad? Goodbye, my lover. Goodbye, my friend. You have been the one. You have been the one for me. But it is like a cool voice. Goodbye, my lover. It's also that everything's like really slow balance. You have been the one. It's got that like same problem that Brian Adams is everything I do, I do it for you. We're like, goodbye, my lover. Goodbye, my friend. Like the lyric density is extremely low. Like, goodbye, my lover. Goodbye, my friend. You have been the one. You have been the one. And also the tempo so slow, so you know what's going to come. So you're just like, oh yeah, I know. It's like my brain is just screaming. Maybe I have a too short attention span, but I had that even when this came out like ages ago. But I think I like this more than You're Beautiful. Okay, Akon definitely has a fair amount of kind of not the best music. Fun music, though. I Just Had Sex is a highlight, I think. <laughs> I don't know this song. I don't really know what it's about. Let's look it up. What is Akon's Ghetto about? Akon's Ghetto explores the struggles and resilience of life in impoverished areas. The song is a reflection on the realities of ghetto life aiming to bring awareness and empathy from those outside looking in. Akon uses his personal experiences and observations to craft a narrative that is both impactful and insightful. Sounds like a rare, very serious, very thought out song from Akon. You know, a lot of his stuff seems to be like about hot girls, whatever. <laughs> this must have been early in his career, given the pixelation of this video. <laughs> Before he found his groove, which was like, baby, you're hot. <laughs> Okay, Ava Max, interesting. I do think this is her strongest song, for sure. I like the stuff she did with uh, my favorite producer, Circuit, as well. Well, he's my favorite producer right now. I don't know, he might have produced this, but he also produced her newest album, which is really good. But this is definitely the song that connects the strongest. So freaking catchy. Sounds so good. By the way, my name is Rumi. We're uploading Wednesdays and Saturdays. So subscribe or whatever if you want. If you don't, that's totally fine. By the way, these videos do get freaking claimed by record labels. See, if you want to support us, head on over to patreon.com slash Rumi official. They get the videos early. Patrons, right here. Thank you, patrons. We appreciate you. This patron's real hot. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. Um, <laughs> what's going on? Let's continue the video. <laughs> okay, more douche rock incoming. <laughs> Oh, a simple plan. That's interesting. I don't think of that as douche rock in the same way that you might say Nickelback is. It's more like pop punk or emo. <laughs> Why'd you go and let you go? Things so complicated. <laughs> Lots of songs in this genre sound very similar. I think they're pretty good. I like Simple Plan. Okay, Shop Ball. This is a good song, and I also like Temperature, but overall, it is weird when he's like on pop songs, comes in and does a rap, and just the vibe really gets weird. He's fine, but yeah, you could argue he's an awful artist. I can see why, you know, my researcher put it in here. A lot of these artists are the fun artists, if that makes sense. It's like, you know it's gonna be silly, but fun when you see it's Sean Paul or Pitbull or Akon. Oh, Demi Lovato, bad artist? S spicy take. Hmm, this is a bad choice for her greatest song. I would say Sorry Not Sorry is probably my favorite. She's got a bunch of good songs though. Skyscraper maybe? Some really good ones. This is kind of like a second single. I didn't, I didn't love this. Stone Cold, crazy vocal. I mean, she's a crazy vocalist. I don't see how you can kind of say she's an awful artist. I'm offended. Now I gotta find the, the researcher. I'm gonna make him pay. Pay me for making the compilation. Okay. Uh, Idina Menzel, let it go. Well, what are you gonna compare her to? Like, freaking, you know, how she sings in Wicked? <laughs> if you don't know Idina Menzel, she's like a musical theater performer. I don't think she's released a lot of music herself. There's a whole generation who grew up with this. 
I mean I don't I don't mind that but yeah she's a weird artist to say she's awful <laughs> ah Tom Cochrane with life is a highway okay well it is weird to hear this vocal on this song because the Rascal Flats version is just so much better <laughs> One interesting observation here is that he really sits on like a, the in-between of major and minor. So it's kind of like a blues note. Life is a highway. And uh, Rascal Flats is straight up major, like really happy. If you're going my way, I want to ride it all night long. But maybe because they auto-tune pretty hard too. Like this is an in-between between notes, which auto-tune kind of doesn't do as well. And Rascal Flats like these big choir packages that are like really, you know, segmented harmonies and stuff that sound better when things are really clean. It's a fun song to sing. I can't think of another song by Tom though. So maybe this is just, maybe he is an awful artist. I don't know. <laughs> Kesha awful artist. Hmm. No, she's got good stuff, but this might be her best song though. So catchy. This is like the definition of that one note pop in the 2010s. Literally spamming two notes. I mean, mainly at least. It's, it's catchy as heck. I like Kesha a lot. I don't think she's an awful artist. For another edgy video, check out hit songs that are ripped off right here. <laughs> that was a really fun one. Really going into depth and comparing songs that are considered to be ripped off. I will see you in the next video, either on Wednesdays or Saturdays, or if you head on over to Patreon immediately, because they're very far ahead. I'll see you soon. Bye. Editor, make me a transformer. <laughs> <laughs>